that up. Hey everybody and welcome to my reasons why I like Borderlands 2 video. Um, really just kind of wanted to get into why I like this game and what about it kind of is, you know, special to me. Reasons why this game, you know, really strikes a chord with me. Reasons why I enjoy playing it and I, to this day, have continued playing it since its release. One of the first reasons why I've enjoyed it is, well, one is leveling up. One of the reasons I enjoy this game is because of the leveling up system and how skill trees work. You always start with your action skill, which is the skill here at the top, which is whoever you choose, no matter what class it is, it'll have this one skill up here that'll be its class defying skill. Now, throughout the skill trees, you have things that make the skill tree sort of its own. Like, this skill tree has a lot of things around this melee build, where you can get increased melee damage, uh, you get health, well, it's about health bonuses, melee damage, and it's also about tipping your explosive damage, things like that, and it's also about getting this. Now, this has different things called, like, kind of like game changers. Like this, if you die, you drop a grenade, and if it kills someone, you get double experience for the kill. This, um, in this game, there's this thing called Fight for Your Life, which is uh, when you get down, or when you're down, pretty much, you, instead of, usually you're crawling around trying to kill something. Well, this lets you run around with the thing of dynamite. And this, um, this lets you bring back, immediately bring back a teammate. But the thing that sucks about that, though, is it immediately puts you down. Which is pretty cool. Um, and this skill tree is all about getting, like, health bonuses and, like, that and this are obviously melee damage increase. Is, you know, it's to buff your melee also. And the cool thing about that is you can do a hell of a ton of, a lot of, a shit ton of melee damage. I don't know what I was trying to say there. Yeah, you can do a shit ton of melee damage, which is pretty cool. Um, but some of these skills, like this one right here that I'm constantly kind of hovering over, it's you have a 12% chance to attack yourself. Now, this isn't like out of every so many swings you're going to hit yourself. There's actually a random number generator that goes from 1 to 100, and if you land on 1 to 12, you will hit yourself. You can potentially keep hitting the numbers 1 to 12 until you die or get down which sucks it's happened to me that's this skill tree it's a good melee building skill tree but it's got a lot of like risk v reward kind of things this skill tree on the other hand is all about getting these things called bloodlust decks and depending on how you invest it your bloodlust decks will drastically change you have skills like this which in uh, which during your action skill it gives you damage reduction and then you have this which is a game changer which gives you dynamite strapped to your um, during your skill the specific character who is the psycho has a buzz axe which is pretty much like a buzz on a fire axe put together well this adds a strap of dynamite to that and he can throw it and when he throws it it does melee damage, and then this adds an explosive element to it, which is pretty cool. And then you've got things like this, which for Bloodlust, you get more uh, Rampage time. And then this is helpful because the Bloodlust stacks do decay over time. So this keeps us around for a little bit longer. And this is pretty cool. Um, if you get Bloodlust and you use this, pretty much when you kill an enemy, they'll explode. And if you use an elemental weapon, they'll explode that element. Well, if you don't have an element, or if you're using explosively explosive. Well, this, plus the other explosive bonuses, can really help you out in a tough situation. It's neat, and I really like it. Um, I'm actually not too versed in what this skill tree is. Every character has three skill trees, and I'm getting a little too much into his, and I'm very sorry about that. This skill tree is about fire. He lights himself on fire, and he can get, like... Um, like if he's on fire, he can t he'll take less damage, this, that, and the other. You can pretty much morph this skill tree into pretty much never letting him die, which is pretty neat. 
But uh, back to the whole leveling up thing, I really trailed off there. Um, pretty much what happens is every character will have their main skill and three different skill trees. And depending on how you play, you'll you'll either harness skills from the skill tree or you'll just kind of, you know, trail them off. Some skill trees are useful to how you play and other skill trees are actually not. Which kind of sucks for, you know, depending on how you play. Um, yeah. And next, we'll talk about loot drop chances and sort of how looting and getting good guns kind of works and sort of and why I like that. It's going to be fun. Okay, now the next thing we're going to talk about here is loot dropping and loot chances and getting loot and good guns. Pretty much looting in general. Uh, the game has a system of looting of where every weapon has a rarity. A rarity is marked by a color. Each color has a different percentage chance of dropping. The most common is white, which I think has... Which, sorry, which I think has, it obviously has the highest drop rate. I think it's 50 or so percent. It's either 50 or 40 percent, something like that. And then under that, I think is, under that is green, which I think has like 20. And I think it's blue, which has like 15. And I think it's purple, which has like 10, 10 or 7. And under that is orange rarity. Well, under that's two more. The first one's Orange Rarity, which Orange Rarity... Got a green gun there. Orange Rarity drops in a way of... It's like .07. And if you know what percentages are, then you'll know that .07% of 100 is very low. It's lower than 1%. It sucks, and, you know... Ah. Which, you gotta feel bad for the guy who, you know, is trying to get those orange weapons, because they're hard to get. Uh, they've made it easier in some ways to kind of give you alternatives around looting. One alternative you have around looting is, like, farming, which is pretty much you're still looting, it's just you're controlled looting. Because certain enemies in this game are programmed to actually drop certain weapons at a better chance. Uh, these certain weapons are like the orange ones, which are called legendary weapons. Uh, the orange weapons have, on occasion, have special attributes that make them better than other weapons. And this, that, and the other. That's why they're called. Uh, that's why they're also called legendary weapons. Which is, they're pretty cool. I'm using one right now called the Uncamped Herald. It's pretty cool. Uh, uh, you know, and you can see. It does that. It shoots in a in like a spray pattern. There it goes uh, three, five, seven, and it's pretty cool. And orange weapons have abilities. Like this is a blue gun. This just shoots. This, that, and the other. Gun shoots. And this is a blue weapon, but this is called a unique weapon. With your weapon rarities, you also have this thing which is called unique versus regular. Unique weapons are purple or blue weapons that have that red text, and that usually means they do something special. This one shoots cannonballs, and the cannonball will ricochet once before exploding. That one gun kind of sucks. But this is different. This is the Sandhawk. Uh, the Sandhawk, for some reason, shoots in the shape of a hawk. Which is kind of obvious by the name of the gun, but if you've never played the game, then there you go. Uh, the Uncamped Herald is or is an orange weapon. I don't know why I just teabag around. It's an orange weapon. Uh, it kind of looks like other weapons. You can tell by the skin that it's an orange weapon, because orange weapons will kind of have specific skins, kind of. But yeah, and as you can see, it has that flavored text there. That flavored text kind of explains a little bit into what it does. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It shoots in a three five seven pattern. And the gun itself is actually a reference to Dirty Harry. Because if you read the text, did I fire six shots or only five? Three? Seven? Whatever. Um, that's a reference to what Dirty Harry says in the movie when he says, right before he says, Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do ya? And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to have references like that for rarities and stuff. 
And yeah. Um, there is another rarity before I forget to mention. There is a rarity after orange. It's called pearlescent. It is a light blue color. Now, the thing about pearlescents is that though they are rarer than orange weapons, many are considered to actually not be as good as their orange counterparts. So people actually go and say a lot of times that orange is better than, per than pearl. Just kind of because it's the way they set it up. Unfortunately. Alrighty, let's move on. I actually don't know where I'm going to move on. Um, ah, crap. Hmm. 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 I don't know. Where should we move on to? I actually don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. I actually am moving on to the scenery. This game has some very nice scenery. I actually very much enjoy the, vis the visual aesthetic of this game. And one of the things I enjoy even more is that. That visual aesthetic of the moon always watching you and being everywhere gives you a sense of feeling that Hyperion really is watching your every move. Which is a big theme of the game is that Hyperion is the, you know, big bad evil company ran by the villain, this, that, and the other. So, yeah. Another thing I like, since, you know, they're already here, is the enemy types. As you saw over there, I was fighting robots, which apparently they're still fighting me. Um, in the sky, you probably missed it, but there were these flying enemies. And then over here are these little guys called skegs. Kind of like dogs, um, but not really. The game has a very robust sort of multitude of enemies. The game has enough of a differentiation of enemies that you don't really get bored that easily. It doesn't just, you know, kind of bore you out after five minutes of here's the same enemy for, you know, the entire game or for most of the game. Now, the game does have a lot of repeating enemy variants just because, you know, the game has, I mean, you're going to spend a lot of time fighting the Hyperion guys, so of course you're going to fight a lot of robots and Hyperion guys, of course. There's a lot of bandits and bandit areas, so of course you're going to be fighting a lot of bandits. Then there's also the animals, you know, which the game makes good use of if you go to an area, you know, they, they put a good, a fitting, you know, way to put enemies into areas. They're like, okay, these enemies make sense in this area for this reason, you know, and the game doesn't have enemies that feel out of place or enemies that just kind of feel weird for being somewhere. And yeah, and it's a pretty cool thing. I also like how bodies kind of linger around for a little while. Just to give you the thrill of watching it kind of disappear. Just watching it go away. <laughs> but yeah. Those are... Those are pretty interesting things. And this is pretty cool too. The game has... Borderlands 2 has this thing of... You have vendors and shops and this, that, and the other, and you have three different vendors. Now, the thing is, is that though there are three vendors, not all three of them will be everywhere. Usually, you'll get your ammo, and this, you can buy class mods, which are, well, these pretty much give you bonus abilities, like this, like that plus five blood overdrive skill. That's one of the skills in one of my skill trees, actually. So it gives a bonus to that. Plus the other effect there, which is the kill skill duration. You know, and there are different ones. Which is pretty cool. They have the variation of that. They also have these shields. Aside your health, you have... The, beside, sorry. Besides your health, you have these shields. Shields can do a myriad of things. This is an absorb shield. It actually will absorb a bullet and give it back to you. But it has an awkward chance of doing it. This is an adaptive shield. This will actually give you elemental damage resistance equal to however much damage you took before the elemental damage. A little complicated, but it also gives you max health, which is helpful for some classes, and eh, uh, it's whatever for others. That's still pretty cool. 
The dialogue's also very good. Each of the machines has their own dialogue, and so do various characters in the game. Um, because I've already beaten the story, I can't really tell you too much of the story dialogue, but the way they've written the villain in the game, Handsome Jack, is written very well, and I very much enjoy it. And last but not least, one of my other favorite things of gameplay is this. This is the badass rank system. It's sort of like a reward system for completing small things in the game. Killing enemies, doing other little small things, and, you know, just kind of in general rewards for you've killed this boss that's really hard to kill. Well, here's a point for that, and then points can go to bonus stats, which, look at that crazy amount of bonus stats. It's pretty cool. Badass ranks are really helpful, and they're actually pretty easy to get. The game has a multiple playthrough system, which, with each playthrough, you can acquire, you know, more kills to get, you know, more badass ranks. This, that, and the other. Uh, you also stack badass ranks from your other characters. You have six characters to choose from, and for every badass rank each character gets, it also goes to every other character. So pretty much, just because you're playing as the Psycho, doesn't mean you can't get a little bit of a bonus for one of your other characters you like to play as. Which, in essence, is pretty cool. But yeah, guys, that's all for this video. Um, keep tuned into the channel for future happenings and events, and I will try not to be as awkward with the next video. Enjoy the rest of your days, and keep it safe out there, everyone.